Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Have you ever had nylon or other filament that got moisture in it, maybe because it was humid? Well now, you can dry it yourself at home with a print dry. So in front of me, as I mentioned, we have the print dry and we have an optional accessory. This is a little storage tote that you can use this suction device and suck all the air out and keep your filament in there nice and dry. Throw some desiccant packs in the bottom of that with the filament. We'll use that at the end. But I have a roll here of Tolman alloy. It's 960 CF. This is a carbon fiber. It's about 6% carbon fiber um, nylon material. And nylon is hygroscopic. So a lot of the filaments will absorb moisture to a certain degree. Nylon tends to be one of the worst for that. Um, and in this case, I have almost an entire kilo that I need dried. So we're gonna use the print dry to do that. The print dry here is kind of similar to a food dehydrator, but it has two specially designed shelves. So you can have two rolls of filament at a time drying in here. Um, and you don't even have to take the filament out in order to run it through your machine. They give you these little eyelets on either level. Um, and since the spools are on kind of little spindles, they'll spin freely and you can actually just feed the material right out into the printer, which is what we're gonna do today. Um, so for nylon in the manual, there's a guide for the different temperatures and amounts of time that you'll need for the different materials. PLA needs a lot less time than something like nylon and ABS and PETG are somewhere in the middle there. So for nylon, it needs 12 hours at 70 degrees. Um, that's 70 degrees Celsius. So 160 Fahrenheit for you Americans. Um, so we're gonna load this into the bottom here and get it drying and then we'll come back and uh, show the difference between a wet print and a dry print. So before I actually throw this in there, I'm gonna take a snip of some material off the end here so that I have a good sample of wet filament. And then uh, we'll throw the rest of this in there, dry it up. There we go. So in the print dry, there's these two little ball bearing rollers you just lay this guy on top, and then there's a little spacer here that goes in the top of here to kind of keep him centered, and he spins quite freely. Um, we're not doing a second one, so we'll just throw the entire second level on top. And then simply just turn it on, set it to the appropriate temperature for your material. So as I said, 70, which is max for this unit, and we'll come back in about 12 hours and see uh, the difference between wet and dry material. All right, so we're back. It's been running for just under 12 hours now. I'm just gonna move this to the side. We'll keep it running while we get our trusty Ender 3 set up here. Okay. So we've put the Ender on the left side of the print dry because I'm actually gonna feed it right out of the print dry and into the Ender. And I don't even have to shut this off. I could do that while it's still warm. Um, so we'll heat up the Ender here and before we do that, we're going to take our wet filament that I cut off before we put it in the dryer, and we're gonna put this through the, uh, the hot end and show you how it kind of bubbles and pops and hopefully you'll see a little bit of steam. Um, it's hard to pick that up on the camera. Uh, and then show you the difference after it's been dried. I knew it was, it was wet because I was having a, a really difficult time getting the layers to bond together, and 960 CF runs at extremely high temperatures. You're usually printing this around 290, 295 on a brass nozzle. And yes, it's carbon fiber and it will wear out a brass nozzle. Um, but if you're printing with hardened steel, you're gonna have to crank that temperature even more. Let's get this guy heating up. So while that's heating up, I'll just take the time to feed this through the hole in the, uh, in the plastic ring. So, feed this right through here. Super smooth. Actually, gotta be careful you don't unwind too much of that. Okay, 
This guy is at 140, so I should be able to get this out of here. And now we need to put this as high as we can comfortably go on an ender. So I'm gonna put it at about 245 degrees, just, just hot enough. We're not actually gonna print with it, but just hot enough that it'll extrude properly. Now, because of the PTFE liner, that's why we're not going any higher than that. It's definitely capable of going higher, but you'd want to at the very least swap this out for something like Capricorn that can stand the higher temperatures for prolonged periods. And we'll just wait until that's up to temp. I fed this uh, wet filament or the damp filament in and I'm just gonna extrude it by hand and hopefully you can see it pop and fizz a little bit. I can hear it, but not so much see it. There was a couple. Yeah. The other thing is, is now that I've I've stopped pushing it through and I've even retracted a little bit. It still continues to, uh, to ooze out. And one of the things Tallman, there's a couple pops. One of the things that Tallman mentions is that it may ooze if you have moisture in the filament because that, that water is expanding in the hot end and kind of pushing the rest of it through. And uh, it's kind of hard to see here, but there's, there's some bulges in the filament. It's definitely not like a smooth extrusion like you would expect, it's extremely rough. I would expect to have a little bit of texture because of the carbon fiber, obviously, but this is, I know, not, not how it came when it was dry. And we'll, uh, we'll compare that to, to the dry filament now. So here's my dry filament. Pull this one all the way out. We're done with him. There we go. And the little bit of white on the filament was just the previous color that I didn't fully bleed out. All right. Come on. Well, no hissing or popping, so that's a step in the right direction. It's a lot more smooth than the, uh, the wet one was. And hopefully, the real proof would be the layer adhesion issues that I had previously. Those will hopefully be gone. And in this case, I could probably just run this exactly like this. It'll pull it straight off the, uh, the print dry without having to pull the spool out. If I wanted to pull the spool out, maybe I'm done printing. Let's cool this guy down. So if I was done printing, maybe I'll chop this guy here on a 45, turn this guy off. And then we can use the optional accessory here, the storage tote that I mentioned earlier to store the filament and make sure that it stays dry. Especially if I'm not printing with nylon for, for a while, like for a long period of time, I wanna make sure that it's at the very least in a dry box, hopefully in an airtight container with some desiccant packs to make sure that it stays stays dry, but this is kind of the, the next step, I guess, in that. You can also use the print dry to dry your desiccant packs. You can put it in there at the bottom, run it for, uh, I forget how many hours, at 70 degrees, and uh, then your desiccant will be ready for reuse. And if you have color changing desiccant, you'll be able to tell by the color change whether it's dry enough to reuse or not. So this fits a standard kilo spool. This is kind of a larger kilo spool, these ones. So throw the filament roll in there, put the lid on, clamp it down. All 
and then you'll use this hand tool and the nipple here has a little bulge in the center that lets you know that there's no vacuum right now. And so, now the nipple is completely depressed. And so over time, if that loses its vacuum, you'll be able to tell just by looking at it and then release it, you're ready to go again. And as I said, hopefully my layer bonding issues are resolved. I'm gonna give that another crack maybe tonight or tomorrow. Hopefully you found that useful. Remember, like and subscribe and ring the bell below to get notified when we upload more content. And leave us a message. Let us know what you'd like to see in the future. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.